Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 64 scale Hot Wheels Range Rover Classic. It's got some nice tampos on it but very clearly has room for improvement with added details. Big off-road tires, smoked glass, it's a plastic base with not a lot of detail on the bottom. So I'm going to work on this as my entry to this month's Four Horsemen Invitational on the theme of safari vehicles. The Four Horsemen are Paul from Diecast Graveyard, myself representing Maple Leaf Customs, Tom from Caliber 50 Customs, and Harolyn from Go Bears Diecast Workshop. And we welcome Chris from Chris's Junkyard Designs as our guest horseman. You can see the next vehicle coming, and remember, if you don't have the exact casting that we have promoted, use the next closest one you can find. For instance, today you could use a Jeep or something like that that has a similar look and feel, and then you won't miss out on the monthly builds. These big tires are plastic, and they already look muddied up, but I think I can do better than that. It's a two-seat interior, right-hand drive, interestingly. Smoked glass. Oh, it's got a little bit of schmutz on it there. No problem. And a great big post pair of them. Hmm. Okay, good bones to work with today. So let's get started. I use a small flathead screwdriver to just get in between these three little tabs. See them there? And I just twist them apart a little bit. I don't want to break them off, so I can close them up later on. And now it looks like this. See? Still intact. Front and back. And the axle should pop out that easily for you. Hey, Porsches are still rolling in for my third anniversary invitational, and this one came from David Traves. Thank you, David, for submitting that. I think it looks cool. Coming up on MLC, I'm doing a funny car for the Diecast International Builders Invitational. And I've got a buddy build with Santa Slow Dog. We're doing a Red Lines Red Baron restoration. A friend of the channel sent me this intriguing pic, and I thought, I'll take a shot at doing that, so have a look out for the Huey Semi coming up soon. This week's shout-out goes to Dark Horse Projects, who was one of the participants in my All Porsche Invitational, and he made a 911 GT2 that you see here in one of his shorts presentations. Link is in the description so you can go check out his channel, make a new friend, and get all subbed up. The Land Rover Range Rover, generally known simply as the Range Rover, is a 4x4 motor car produced by Land Rover, a mark and sub-brand of Jaguar Land Rover. The Range Rover line was launched in 1970 by British Leyland and is now in its fifth generation. In 1972, the British Trans Americas Expedition became the first vehicle-based expedition to traverse the Americas from north to south, including across the roadless Darien Gap. The specially modified Range Rovers used for this expedition are now on display in the British Motor Industry Heritage Trust Collection at Graydon, Warwickshire in the UK. The Range Rover was used to win the 1979 inaugural and the 1981 Paris to Dakar rally, completing a race distance in each case of approximately 10,000 kilometers. Range Rovers also competed in the East Africa Safari Rally through the 1980s, so this safari theme is a familiar one for this off-road legend. I've selected Viejo Yellow Ochre that I think most closely fits many of the Google images that I've downloaded during my research. I'm taking off the original Hot Wheels plastic wheels and replacing them with these all-rubber Samet 4x4 wheels that already look muddied up, actually a little too muddy for me. So I'm going to dull that down just a little bit, 
and you can do that too with any of your custom jumps. And I secure them with a little bit of JB Super Weld and cure it instantly with the UV light. Does Samet have off-road wheels? You bet they do, and you can find them at www.samedwheels.com and please use the promo code Maple Leaf to receive a free bonus gift with your next order. Being a 3D resin printing enthusiast, I did some surfing around online and I found all of these various STL files that together are going to make up a really great body kit that I'll put on my Range Rover including fender flares, this roof rack, some cargo to go on the top, and even these side view mirrors which I've already printed and put on before the yellow ochre paint job. I even found a snorkel that is going to be apropos for any serious safari vehicle. And each of these are going to get a matte black finish in striking contrast to the body color is already looking like a vast improvement from the casting that came out of the blister pack. This one's taking the easy route down the river. I do my own decals and in this case it's pretty simple. Range Rover lettering across the front of the hood, like so. And a transparent decal for the Camel Trophy now looks like the body color, which is exactly what the original looks like. And a little smaller, understated Land Rover badge on both sides. Mine doesn't have clear windows here. The body is filled in. Each one's a little bit different. I pull out my dollar store rhinestones and I'm using the proper size here to fit into the printed roof rack. So I've got real lights. And that's a really nice effect for authenticity. Look at that. Most of my accessories are hand brush painted, like these wooden crates that I'm going to put on the roof rack and these jerry cans. Do them in red, but I want to have them look pretty dusty and safari worn as well. Looking good. All of these little bits together make a big difference. My favorite part is these fender flares. So I apply a little bit of super glue with the tip of a toothpick. It doesn't take very much here. And carefully, oh, good drop. Score on the first try. I'll sand those down at the bottom if needed, and inside the wheel wells, I'm going to paint them black, so that will be an invisible blend now. Oh, I really like the effect that I'm getting. It's coming together. This is one of the original Hot Wheels that I'm painting to match the Sam Ed wheels in rim color, and it's going to go on the hood, as per many of the picks I've found. The skid plate, the exhaust accessories, some of the struts on the bottom get a chrome touch up. And now I'm going to go to work on this custom interior. I'm putting all of my four horseman cars up for sale this year, so I want to go fully detailed as much as possible whenever I can, starting with the steering wheel replacement. Clip out the original and drill a hole and fasten this new 3D printed one with a little bit of super glue. Tape off the front and the back that you're not going to see and I'm giving this a tan leather interior look. That's going to match the exterior paint color nicely. 
If you look closely, you'll see some seat belts are molded into the seats, but they are impossible to paint, at least for me. So I went with a set of real ones done with a couple of strips of tape. These little prints here can be blue NOS bottles, or today they're red fire extinguishers, because you're out on a safari and you see a rhino on fire, what are you going to do? You put it out and carry on. How many times has that happened to me? What do you think? It won't all show up clearly through the smoke glass, but I think it's important to add those. This is the printed bumper bar and more rhinestones, but this time they're yellow for fog lights. They give a nice 3D effect in contrast to those that might just be painted on. This will be the last thing that I affix during the final assembly. I'm taking the aptly named Mud Brown Vallejo acrylic paint and watering it down, oh, four to one, I'd say, just for some homemade brown wash. I'm not weathering this to make it look old. I'm just trying to make it look like it just returned from a muddy safari and hit every rain puddle on the way. And I achieved that effect nicely this way. Channel logo always goes on the bottom, just so you know where this creation came from. It's time to load up the roof rack with the 3D printed cargo. Here's some wooden crates. And the jerry cans lined up across the back so you can go out for a week long trip. We're rounding third base now. Tail lights in clear red and orange for the side blinkers. And we're getting awful small now with an MLC 222 license plate. That's the build number. I like to identify my customs in that way. Pretty well all done. I also put some mud splash on the glass front and back to make it look road worn. That's your last good look at the custom interior, but I'm most pleased with that. Everything fits back into place nicely. New Sam Ed wheels. A little bit of chrome and mud on the chassis. Clicks back into place, as I always want to hear. I'm handling it very carefully because of all the extra body kit parts. This one is not kid friendly. A couple of 256 Phillips head screws go back in to lock it all down. And make sure I still got Good rolling wheels. Sure do. As reported, the bumper bar will go on at the very end. Let's have a closer look. I really like how this one turned out. I think it's got a real authentic, well-run safari vehicle look to it. Not weathered with rust and chips, but weather-worn from the mud and the rain. I put a tarp on the top to half cover the cargo up. And I really like the body kit, especially the side mirrors, which were minuscule, and the fender flares, as well as the roof rack and the snorkel. Those parts painted black, I think it was the way to go. All together, a real upgrade. Here it was in the beginning. Not bad, but I thought just plain and a great blank canvas to create this on. Doesn't that look real? Bumper bar, skid plate, off-road tires, big spare on the front. 
I love the snorkel too. Safari cargo supplies in the roof rack. It's ready to roll out on the next big game safari or a photo safari, like my wife likes to do. I hope you enjoyed this one, and you'll leave a respectful comment below with your ideas or feedback. It's not kid-friendly, as I said, so I'm going to put this one up for sale, and you can make a bid on my YouTube channel Community tab. I'll leave that open for a week. Add $10 for international shipping anywhere in the world, and this one could be yours. There's no reserve, so even a top bid of $6 will win it. We'll let the market set the price. Thanks for visiting my channel today. I sure appreciate it. Be sure to check out all the other builds. I hope you come back soon and often. It's coffee time.